Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a video on roots of real numbers. In this lesson, we're going to be taking the square root, the cube root, the fourth root, the fifth root, and all these different roots of numerical expressions and expressions that contain both numbers and variables. Let's start with a little note. When there is more than one real root, the non-negative root is called the principal root. When simplifying radicals, we will only be looking at the principal roots unless otherwise indicated. For questions one through four, simplify to find the roots over the real numbers. In number one, we're faced with something odd as there is this plus or minus in front of our expression. Our textbook does that, and when this happens, you just have to make sure there's plus or minus in front of your answer. And just skipping ahead real quick to number two, number two, the expression is preceded by a negative, so that just means that in our answer, that's going to be preceded by a negative also. It means the opposite of. And in number one, it's plus or minus whatever the answer is. So in number one, the, the actual question is, find plus or minus the square root of 196 x to the 10th. So like I said before, our answer is going to start with plus or minus. Now let's focus first on the 196. What number times itself is 196? Well, the answer is 14. So the square root of 196 is 14. And now I'm going to focus on x to the 10th. What monomial times itself gives us x to the 10th? And that's going to be x to the 5th. x to the 5th times x to the 5th is x to the 10th. So the answer here is plus or minus 14x to the 5th. And the reason the plus or minus is there is merely because it's there in the beginning of the problem as well. Now we're going to see it again in number two, but this time it's just the opposite of. It's not plus or minus, it's just the minus. What else is different in number two is that what we have under the radical is a chunk. So we have the opposite of the square root of chunk to the eighth. So can you think what would happen if we took the square root of chunk to the eighth, what you're going to be left with? If you said q to the fifth plus two to the fourth, then you're correct, or chunk to the fourth. Okay, let's now move to number three, which says the fifth root of 32, a to the 20th, b to the 35th. And let's start by focusing on the number, the numerical expression under the radical, which is 32. What number times itself five times is going to give us 32? If you guess two, you're correct, because two times two times two times two times two is 32. So the fifth root of 32 is two. Now in this one, we don't need a plus or minus in front. We don't need a minus in front because there, there isn't one to begin the problem. Now let's move to the first algebra expression or the first monomial, which is a to the 20th. What monomial times itself five times is going to give us a to the 20th? Well, that's going to be a to the fourth. And let me just show you something real quick down below. a to the fourth times 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 a to the fourth. So remember from earlier in the chapter, if you're multiplying powers of the same base, you retain the base and add the exponents. So four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus four is 16, plus four is 20. The fifth root of a to the 20th is a to the fourth. Now let's move to the last term, which is b to the 35th. What monomial times itself five times is gonna give you b to the 35th? Well, if you said b to the seventh, you're correct. And the little hint here, which you may have noticed, when you're taking roots of powers, you actually divide the exponent of the power by the index. So the exponent for the power of a is 20, and the index is five, and 20 divided by five is four. And then if we look to the next exponent, which is 35, 35 divided by our index five, 35 divided by five, is seven. So that's another way you can think about it. Okay, let's move to number four. Number four asks us to simplify the square root of negative 144. Well, you can't take the square root of negative numbers and remain in the real number system. And since the directions say to evaluate or simplify over the reals, this question is not going to be possible. So we're going to say no solution. Okay, so we're on slide number two, and it says at the top that for certain abstract cases, we will need absolute value around our solution to ensure that we're looking at the principal root. And this is always very confusing every year for students. So 
at my school, we've come up with this gimmick for knowing when to use absolute value and when not to. And the gimmick is sort of like a chant. And the chant is even, even, odd, need it. And what that means is if your index is even and the power of your exponent on the inside is also even and your answer ends up being to an odd power, then you're going to need absolute values around your answer to ensure that what you're looking at is the principal root. Let's take a look at number five, which is a multiple choice question. It says, which answer or answers will require absolute value bars? So what I'd like to do is go through each of the four answers and just first simplify, and then we'll, then we'll discuss the chant. So in 5a, I'd like you to think about the square root of x to the fourth, or what monomial times itself will give you x to the fourth? Well, the answer is x squared. Now, let's go down the line to letter B. The square root of x to the sixth. What monomial times itself will give you x to the sixth? Well, that answer is x to the third. Now, let's go to answer choice C. The cube root of x cubed. So, what monomial times itself three times will give you x cubed? Well, that's just going to be x. And finally, let's take a look at the seventh root of x to the 14th. What monomial times itself seven times is going to give you x to the 14th? Well, this is just going to be x squared. Now, let's consider absolute value. And let's, let's figure out if our answer is going to need that by using the chant, even, even, odd, need it. If we look at sample A, or answer choice A, the index is an implied 2, which is even. The exponent of our variable is also even. And the power of our answer is also even. So we're not going to need absolute value around this answer because the chant is even, even, odd, need it. And this is even, even, even. So we don't need it. Now let's go to answer choice B. The index is an implied 2, which is even. The power of the variable is 6, which is even. And our answer was to a power of 3, which is odd. So guess what? We need it. Even, even, odd, need it. Okay, moving to answer choice C. We have odd, odd, odd. This value here, or this index, is odd. This power on the inside is odd. This is to the power of 1, which is odd. And that certainly does not adhere to our chant. So we don't need it. The answer is just x without the absolute value bar. Okay, let's go to answer choice D. The seventh root of x to the 14th. Well, this one is odd, even, even. Well, that's not the chant either. The chant is not odd, even, even. It's even, even, odd, need it. So we don't need the absolute value in this case either. Okay, now let's take a look at the two samples at the bottom of the page, questions six and uh, seven. In number six, we're asked to take the square root of a chunk squared. So what do you think the square root of a chunk squared is? Well, if you said chunk, then you're correct. But what is the chunk? What is the specific chunk? The specific chunk is x plus seven. Now initially, that x plus 7 was to the power of 2, and now it's to the power of 1. So it might seem a little odd, but guess what? This has an implied index of 2, which is even. This guy here is even, the exponent of our chunk. And then our answer was odd. So guess what? We need absolute value around this answer. It's a little weird, but it takes some getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that big of a deal. So that's an absolute value bar, although that last one's a little crooked. Okay, let's go to the last sample, uh, number seven, on this slide. There's actually a couple more on the next slide. Uh, so number seven, we're taking sixth roots. What number times itself six times is 64? The answer here is two. What monomial times itself six times is a to the 30th? Well, if we do our little division trick where we focus on this power and we focus on this index and we do the division, 30 divided by 6 is 5, so that'll be a to the 5th. And now I'll move to the last term, and I'll use my division trick again. So this time I'm going to focus on the 48, and again on the index of 6. 48 divided by 6 is 8, so this will be b to the 8th. And now let's just go through the chant and see if we need absolute value anywhere. Our index is even. Looking at the power of a, that's also even. And the answer for the power of a is odd. It's 5. So I need absolute value around that. 
Now let's go through the B and, and see if, if that works as well. 6 is even, 48 is even, power of 8 is even. I don't need it around the B answer, just around the A answer. So you can have the absolute value bar around select things. That's also a little bit different for students. So it, it definitely warrants some practicing. <clears throat> okay, we're on our last slide and there's only four more questions and it's just sort of going to be putting it all together. Always keeping in mind that, that question, do we need absolute value around our answer? So let's take a look at number eight. Number eight says, let's simplify the tenth root of t to the tenth. So what monomial times itself ten times is going to be t to the tenth? This one's pretty easy. The answer is t. However, this is even, this is even, this is to the power of 1, which is odd, so I need it. Okay, let's move to number 9. Let's start with the 128. What is the seventh root of 128? What number times itself seven times is 128? Well, the answer is 2. Now, the next thing I'm going to focus on under that radical is the chunk. So we have chunk to the 63rd power. And if I use my little division shortcut here, I'm focusing on the power, which is 63. I'm going to focus on the index, which is 7. And 63 divided by 7 is 9. So the next thing I'm going to write is chunk to the power of 9. Now, let's consider the whole even, even, odd, needed. Well, right from the start, I know I don't need it because the index is 7, which is odd. It's not even, so I don't need it. So let me just box the two answers we've gotten so far. Absolute value t for number 8 and 2 times chunk to the ninth for number 9. Okay, let's go to 10. 10 is a great problem. I'd actually like you to put a star by number 10 because once I show you how to do it, it's easy, but if you don't really focus and you see it again, it's elusive to many, many students. When you look at number 10, you have this trinomial under the radical, and, and many students are tempted to try to take the square root of each of the three terms, which is totally illegal. In fact, the math police will come and throw you in, in math jail. So don't do that. What you want to do, on the other hand, is you want to look at that trinomial and you want to ask yourself, can I factor that? So I want you to think about this as I'm writing the radical. This is factorable as a perfect square trinomial. The square root of 9m squared is 3m, and the square root of n squared is n. And if I multiply those together, I get 3mn, and if I double that, I get 6mn, which is the middle term. So we just passed the test for it being a perfect square trinomial. So it's going to be chunk squared. This guy here is going to be a plus. This sign is always the same as whatever this sign is. So now I've got the square root of chunk squared. Well, what's the square root of chunk squared? It's chunk, and that chunk is 3m plus n. And that chunk is to what power? It's to the power of 1. So what we really have here is an even index, an implied index of 2, an even power for our chunk, and an answer that's also to an odd power. Even, even, odd, need it. So let's box that in and move to our very last question, which is the square root of 121 a to the 6 over 256 b to the 8th. Well, when you're taking a square root of a fraction, you simply take the square root of the numerator and you take the square root of the denominator as separate little problems. So let's go ahead and do that to start. Okay, so focusing on the numerator to start, the square root of 121 is 11. The square root of a to the 6th is a to the 3rd. The square root of 256 is 16, and the square root of b to the 8th is b to the 4th. Now, 11 over 16 cannot be reduced, so I'm safe there. Now I'm going to consider the whole even, even, odd, need it. In the original problem, we had an implied index of 2, because it's a square root. This guy here is even. The answer to the power of a is odd, so I'm going to need absolute value around that a cubed. But do I need it around the b to the 4th? The answer is no, because we have even, even, even in that case. So I need to go ahead and put absolute value around a, a to the third. Now what's going to be tricky here is distinguishing the absolute value from the 1 and the 11, because of course that looks the same. So here we go. And let's put a box around it for more vertical lines to even confuse you more. So this is 11 absolute a cubed over 16 b to the fourth. So I hope this lesson made sense. This is about taking roots of real numbers and roots of variables that can be taken, taken easily with no remainders or anything like that. Uh, and we also learned about when to use this absolute value using the chant even, even, odd, need it.